Debugging a React app is not an easy task. If you do not use the tools you already have for free. And today we're gonna see one that is the Visual Studio Code Debugger. Let's start by setting up the debugger, but I promise it will be just three clicks. The first one, head over the run and debug tab. You will find it probably empty with this create a launch.json file. This is the second click. And actually, if you want to use the arrows here, it will just two clicks. But if you want to use your mouse, click on web app Chrome. This will generate a launch.json file that is pretty much ready. Just make sure to fix the port here because it defaults on 8080. If you're using create react apt, it will be probably 3000. In my case, I'm using vit, so 5173. Hit save. And now if you press F5 in your keyboard, you see that the debugger has started. But where is your application? Well, you also need to make sure that the application is running. So npm run dev, we go back here in the application and there it is. But is the debugger actually attached to our application? Let's find out. I can add a breakpoint, for example, here. And now if I go back to the application and I start playing, there it is. The execution stopped exactly at my debugger, so I know that the debugger is attached to my application. But what can I do now? First of all, you can find the variables panel here. This will basically show all the variables you can access in this specific point in the execution. But is it read-only? Well, it is not. You can actually write something here. For example, I can set that on the first square, I want the letter A. And now if I go back in my application, it's not there yet. But the reason is quite simple. I stopped the execution here, so React is not actually re-rendering live because, well, the application is paused. But as soon as I resume my application, well, then you can find the X, that is where I clicked, and the letter A, which I set manually from the debugger. But that's not everything you can do with variables. For example, if I go back here and stop the execution, you can find that there's a watch tab. What does watch mean? Well, if you add one, it says expression to watch. So you can basically write JavaScript here that will evaluate real time. Let me show you. Squares in position one, is it null? And it says true. But that's not everything. If I change this live with, I don't know, the number one, it now says false. If I get back to null, it updates real time, as you can see. So let's continue the execution. Let me bring this back to null. And the application is now running fine. So what are those buttons I was just using? Well, the first one, just lets you pause and resume the application. But there are many more and let's find their usage. So the second one is step over. This basically let you step over the next line. And in case it's a function call, it steps over, which means it executes the function and goes on the next line. Then we have step into. This is similar to step over, goes to the next line. But if there's a function, it just goes inside that function. And step out, well, you might guess, it goes outside your function on the first line right after. Let me show you an example. If I remove this debugger here, and I set one more there. I continue the execution. And well, first of all, you can see this variable is no longer accessible, so it throws an error. Let's close it for now. We can continue our demo with the call stack panel. Here you can clearly see that we are currently in game.tsx at line 11. It's written here and here. And you also notice that the handle play function has been called by handle click, which has been called by on square click. So if I'm inside this function and I want to get out of it, I can use the step out button. What is going to happen? I might expect I will go on handle click. That is the function which called this one on the line right after on play. Why was on play? Well, that's because this function has been passed and it's handle play. You can find it here. Okay. So on play is handle play. But if it's confusing again, we're now inside handle click, which was called by on square click. So if I step out, I'm inside on square click 
which call this function right here. But there's still more to see. And well, we can head over the breakpoints tab. Let me resume for a second so we have a clean state. And here you can see that there's currently a breakpoint here on game.tsx. And if I add one more when it was previously, well, all the breakpoints are listed here. If you want to remove a breakpoint, but you want to keep track of it, you can just disable it from here. This way you will still have the breakpoint written there, but the execution will not stop. And this is quite useful if you have some breakpoints, which you want to keep track of, but you don't want the code to pause there. And actually you can do something even better. You see this pencil icon right here. If I enable again this breakpoint, but they still want to only pose under some circumstances, well, by clicking this icon, you can write an expression. And only if the expression evaluates to true, then the breakpoint will take action. Otherwise, it will be ignored. For example, I want to stop here only if i, which is the index of the clicked cell, equals to, I don't know, two. Let's see if it works. I go back on the application. I click on the cell with index zero. Nothing happened. Index one, nothing happens. And now that I click where the index is two, well, there you have it. The debugger stopped on this execution because the condition, which I said was i equals to two, is actually true. And you can also verify it on the watch tab. Just add a new one here, and there you have it. This is actually really useful, especially in loops where you don't want to stop at each single execution, but you only want to stop if a condition is met. For example, this one. Anyway, in case you're using Chrome as your browser, well, you now have two free debuggers. The one we just seen on VS Code and a debugger on Chrome, which you can find a video here where I go through all the features which are similar to VS Code, but in case you're interested, you might want to have a look here. And with that said, if you like my content, you might consider subscribing to my channel. All that's gonna happen is that YouTube will show my videos in your homepage. And with that said, Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.